What I'd like to do in that ABM elements element of the ABM learning module is is provide you with more of a access to the various elements that are used in constructing an agent-based model. And in this element, in the Insight Maker reference section, there are uh, short write-ups, typically less than a page, about each one of the various elements that are used to to create agent-based models, and I would recommend that you select these and read them, not that they will completely make sense to you at this point, though it will actually be an exposure, and through, as part of this element, I'm going to, to create another agent-based model, probably in two or more videos, and after, and and as part of doing that, you will get more of an exposure to the various aspects or elements of creating a model. And, and once you finish the videos, then I would suggest that you come back and, and read all of these elements again. And, and over time, as we develop more models, you will become more and more familiar with, with the various components or elements used to create a model. To, it's not something that that you can sort of absorb all at once because typically it's it's relatively new, uh, different than than something that you've learned before. So um, let me go ahead and start. And what I'm what I want to create is a, a random walk example. So let me create a new insight in Insight Maker, and I'll save this and I'll call it random walk. And I'll tag it as as an ABM, um, just a learning example, and I'll save it. Then I'll get rid of this, so I now have a blank slate. And as I said before, you can do a right click and select the agent or the agent-based modeling components from the canvas or you can select them from Add Primitive. And if you're working on a tablet where you can't do a right click, using Add Primitive is, is the way that you have to do that. Now, I want to start with, with an agent, but I initially don't want to create any states. And an agent is simply a folder with that you indicate is acting as an agent rather than a folder. So I have to have something to put in it because you, you can't create a, you can't just select nothing and create a folder because the folder has to, has to contain something. So I can select this and now I can right click on it and say create a folder. So now I have a folder that I can come over here and say the behavior is agent and I'm going to call this call this folder person. It's the person that's going to do this, this random walk. So now I have, I have an agent, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything at the moment, which is, which is okay. And then to, to indicate a population for this agent, I want to go ahead and create a population and I'll just call it population. And then I have to go ahead and tell it that the population size is one because that's a good place to start. And that that the the agent base for this is person. So what I'm telling it is that, that this population is related to this person. And then what I want to do is I want to cause this person to randomly walk around. So I'm, I'm creating an agent based model where the agent doesn't actually have any states. The agent just exists when this population is created. It's put, the placement is done randomly um, on a space that's 100 by 200. So what I want to go ahead and do is, this just happens to already be set up for self, move, random, and random. I want to make this from minus five to plus five in both of them. 
So it says this agent, this self, to move from this point to this point. And this, this is the amount, some random number between minus 5 to plus 5. And what will then happen, the default settings for this is 0, and we'll make this 100. And this is probably more on the order of minutes than on years. So if I now go ahead and run this, it, no, nothing happens because this default display is looking to plot some values of something, but there, there aren't any states. So what I really want is is an agent map, and I'll tell it that the, the legend is automatic because we are going to have some states before we get done. So now by doing that, if I tell it to simulate this, notice that, that it's now simulating a random walk for this person, this one agent that exists. That, depending upon, the, you know, this, your sense of humor, this may be interesting or not. I can then go ahead and select the population and come down here and say, yes, I want there to be a slider. And I want it to be able to vary the slider from 1 to 100. So that now, when I create this population, I can say, now I have... I have 25 people in this population, and if I run the simulation, notice that I now have 25 people doing a random walk in this space. But they're all doing, they're all doing pretty much the same random walk because it's calculating this for each iteration. And if I select this over here, uh, what I really want to do is tell it that I want it to recalculate each time, uh, each step, as opposed to using the same uh, random number each time around. So if I now do this, the, the randomness will be different. It's probably very difficult to see, but, but each step, the random is different, whereas before, it was the same random step each time. So um, that's sort of the beginning of this model. In the next video, I will add some, some idiosyncrasies, you might say, to this model and give you a sense of how you can actually create hybrid models so that you use agent-based elements and the continuous simulation system dynamics model. So, this is the beginning of the random walk example, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.